Welcome to Municipal Affairs. My name is Christopher Brown. In this episode, we're diving into the upcoming election for third vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. The FCM, as many of you may know, serves as the national voice for municipal governance, advocating for policies and initiatives that address the diverse needs of communities from coast to coast to coast. And with the annual FCM conference just around the corner, all eyes are on the bustling city of Calgary where municipal leaders from June 6th to June 9th will converge to tackle pressing issues and chart the course for Canada's local governance landscape. But amidst the workshops, the panels, and the networking sessions, one pivotal event looms large, the election of the FCM's new board of directors and table officers. Among the esteemed candidates vying for the third vice president is none other than Thompson, Manitoba Deputy Mayor Kathy Valentino. Now, in this episode, we sat down with Deputy Mayor Valentino to discuss her candidacy, her priorities for FCM, and her vision for advancing municipal interest on the national stage. So join us as we explore the intersection of local leadership and national advocacy and delve into the crucial role of FCM in shaping the future of Canada's communities. This is Municipal Affairs. Deputy Mayor, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. You have decided to put your name forward for the third vice president of uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities at this upcoming convention here in Calgary, Alberta. That starts on June 6th and runs to June 9th. What was that decision for you based on? Okay, well, thanks for having me. First off, I certainly enjoyed our little interview there at our Association of Manitoba Municipalities Spring Convention. So that was great. So what happened with me to do this is, first off, I love this whole municipal political world. I love meeting people and I love hearing the challenges. And I took it to another level when I became the vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, seeing firsthand communities and listening to everyone's challenges. And I really have realized that it doesn't matter where we live. Everybody has the same challenges, but at a different degree and a different size. So when it was the Prairie's turn to have the opportunity to have a representative on the third vice president for FCM, for me, it was like, this is just a natural fit for me. I believe that I would love to be able to lend a voice and help FCM and help them ensure that the federal budgets and programs are is. Um, kind of encompassing exactly what all municipalities need. So it was an easy thing for me to say, hey, I want to do this and I want to be a part of the FCM and I want to be a part of helping and a part of advocating at that level. So what does FCM mean to you as deputy mayor of your community of the city of Thompson, Manitoba? What does the Federation of Canadian Municipalities mean to you? I think what it, what it means to me and when I when I say me, I think I mean, like, say, from the city of Thompson role, I think it provides that next level of advocacy and funding opportunities for uh, municipalities. Okay, so I want to talk about the challenges, because you said that municipalities across this country have similar challenges, which is correct. And I've done mm -hmm. numerous interviews to I'll be able to agree with that statement. But what are you hearing? What are the challenges that municipalities will be? What what challenges will the municipalities be facing in 2024 and 2025 in your first year if you are successful in this uh, adventure? Well, I think that the challenge is not that they're 2024 and 2025 specific. I think they are challenges that have been happening and and continue to happen and, and grow in, in different different degrees, I, I guess. So I think that for me, the, what I hear all the time and which is very relevant to my own municipality or my city is obviously it's public safety, um, public safety across Canada and rural crime and RCMP is one uh, infrastructure. We need a next, the infrastructure in our municipalities and the infrastructure funding programs federally it's huge that like our municipalities are struggling to keep up. They can't keep up. Um, we talk about with infrastructure comes the challenges of homelessness, which is like our hot topic these days across Canada. I'm very well experienced with that within my city. Um, I can speak to that further. I also, I also believe that it's important that we talk a lot about 
reconciliation with municipalities and how that works on a federal issue. Um, my municipality works very hard at re reconciliation and I hear more and more regional approaches across provinces and working with tribal councils. And I believe that we need to expand on that part of municipalities and that will come with federal support and federal help. Um, so I think those are just a few things that I, I hear all the time. Obviously healthcare, but I mean, that's just the healthcare, that's more of a federal thing more, I think, than what we can look at locally, but that's always a hot topic. So I want to I want to talk about some of those issues and I want to sort of get mm -hmm. your your path that you hope to uh, work on if you are the successful candidate. Now, let's just start with rural crime because that's the first one you brought up. Um, FCM is the national organization for municipalities across Canada. How do you see your role as deputy mayor being able to address the issue of rural crime on that national stage? Because municipal leaders often look at past results. Is there an area that you can say, we here at the city of Thompson and myself as deputy mayor, we've been able to help address this issue locally. And we're hoping to bring that from a local level to a national level. Yeah, absolutely. So talking about local crime slash RCMP, I think also it's important that not every province has RCMP. They have their own police forces also. So I, I want to recognize that absolutely when I, when I speak to it. But I also think that what I bring to that is in the city of Thompson, we have the largest RCMP contract in the province with 38 members. It eats up $6.8 million of our budget. And we have a population of 13,000 people. And our surround, we surround a, a, our communities around us bring about 60,000 people. So I'm very aware of the cost of RCMP or police services, so to speak, to municipalities. And the, a hot topic that was at the FCM level was the unionization costs that were incurred to municipalities when the RCMP became unionized. It was done without consultation from municipalities. So you can imagine the city of Thompson's unionization bill that we got with 38 members. It was in the millions. So with no consultation to municipalities. So those things, now they've settled another contract with no consultation to municipalities again. So we're gonna get hit with another retroactive cost. So I believe that at a federal level, like through a, a, a federation of community municipalities, they can lend a voice to put pressure on Ottawa on how some of these decisions are being made for funding for RCMP for municipalities that have RCMP contracts. They have that voice and can lend that voice that we need. And I think I can bring value to that. Do you, you also look at the I, I apologize. Cost. I want to just oh, want sorry. to ask a sort of follow-up question yeah. there, uh, Deputy Mayor, yeah. for a second, if you don't mind, because Putting pressure is one thing, and that is an important part, is to try to get these conversations happening. Do you do you think you your voice would be able to get those conversations going at a federal level if you when you are the third vice president? Okay, so maybe putting pressure, but we want to we should have a seat at the table to be in discussion, right? Wordsmithing here a little bit. Come on, so. Uh, so we need to have a voice at the table to speak on behalf of municipalities. And FCM as, an, as advocates should be able to get a seat at that table to, to say that municipalities need to be consulted or there needs to be a communication process. That's one example with unionization of, of the RCMP costs because even a province that has their own police force, whatever those unionization costs have increased for the RCMP, it's going to be a direct relation to an increase of what they're going to have to pay for their private police forces. It's going to go hand in hand. So it definitely is something, yeah, it's definitely something I think that I can definitely lend a, a, a voice to. And I would love for us to be able to get at the seat for those discussions. You, as a representative of a city, and I would say, and I and I hate to use this word because I don't like it, but the rural urban part of Manitoba, northern part of Manitoba, how does your background and your time in municipal uh, office 
set you up to advocate for issues, say in Amherstburg, Ontario, or in Charlottetown, PEI, do you feel like you would be able to adapt and address issues from across Canada? Because as the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, you're not just representing the prairies, you're going to be representing all municipalities across Canada. So do you think that your background as a municipal leader will allow you to work with all communities, big, small, urban, rural, from the smallest village of 50 people in Saskatchewan to the largest city of Toronto? Yeah, absolutely. And the reason I can say absolutely so quick is I think that I have benefited greatly from being the vice president of Association of Manitoba Municipalities and touring our 137 municipalities in our own province. And there have been villages and there is the city of Winnipeg. So it's so, I don't even know how to put a, put a, a, the right word to it, but everybody has this same little issue, whether it's public safety, and it might be a village of 50, it's also the city of Winnipeg when we're talking millions. So I think that to adapt, absolutely, I can adapt. Um, because you have to also, you aren't reinventing the wheel. We have to have dialogues and we have to have communication because all of these problems are the same we just have to ensure that whether it's the FCM or our AMM, that we have the right people at the, the voice at the table to have those conversations, to advocate for these municipalities of all sizes, of all sizes. So on the flip side of that, because as the Canadian Federation, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, you have a province that traditionally speaks French, that is called Quebec. I've got to ask the simple question, but it's an important one because everyone, not just the prairies, get to vote on third vice president. Every delegate at FCM gets to, including those who only speak French. How's your French? Absolutely. That's a very good question, actually. Um, no, my French is terrible. I took it in high school because I had to take it in high school. We have a very good um, French like the French side of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, and I'm not going to try and speak it or anything like that because I find when people do that, that's disrespectful. We also have one of our AMM um, uh, reps that sits on FCM Laurent, who is bilingual and has a very good relationship with, with the province of Quebec folks, and he's running again as one of our Manitoba reps. So I think that goes to having relationships and having people to help you. So if I needed help to have those conversations with not just the province of Quebec, I mean, people across Canada speak French and, and different languages, but you have to have relationships with all different people and building those relationships and having some kind of a communication strategy. I think it, you can make it work. You, you talk about reconciliation, especially with First Nations and our Indigenous people of our of Canada, and I shouldn't say of Canada, but Indigenous people in Canada. Um, you, municipalities are looking for partners. The city of Thompson has partnered with many of uh, your uh, First Nations neighbors. Uh, how important is it for yourself to be able to work alongside First Nations communities and Indigenous communities, even Métis communities, uh, to address the, the issues that are facing municipalities today? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very, very important to me. And um we in the city of Thompson were one of the first in Canada to have an Aboriginal accord in 2010. It has been adopted by the city of Winnipeg and other, other cities across Canada. And we use that as a guiding document in, in everything we do. We, um, we also have a community safety and well-being plan that we always look through the, through the lens of reconciliation or economic reconciliation. We have great, great relationships and partners with our First Nation leaders. And um, we, we've built some pretty unique things in Thompson. And I, I would like to highlight one of them, which I think is very important, is that we have what's called through the, and, and I talked earlier that homelessness is like the buzzword, it seems, right, because of that. So the city of Thompson is one of the designated communities under the Reaching Home program, which is a federal program. So we are one of the communities that get designated federal funding. And the city of Thompson has created what's called, it's now being called the Thompson model, where we have an experienced, lived experience council. 
So how it works is the funding through the Reaching Home program goes through this lived experience council and they decide where that funding goes into what projects. Um, and it's now being adopted by municipalities and cities across Canada. And the city of Thompson actually presented that at the homeless conference in Halifax in November. So um, it's a very creative approach because homelessness and working with our First Nation communities and reconciliation, it's a real thing here in the city of Thompson and in Northern Manitoba. And we work with it, we don't speak against it. And we're creative in finding, finding ways to make it work together. And this lived experience council is one that's, that's very good and taking off federally. So that's one I, I think it's very worth noting because it's something that's, that can help many places also to try and adopt. I could go on and on about reconciliation and different things that we've done. And uh, I mean, the city of Thompson, we also signed the second biggest economic development in the province with Kuwait and Tribal Council, and it's called Pusico, which means in Cree, rise up. And it's an 89 acre development that will be within our, our boundaries. And it will be a mixed use development with um, commercial use, uh, 380 units for housing, some medical care, um, uh, treatment areas. So we're very proud of that also. It's, um, it's a really unique thing. And how it works with treaty land entitlement, this is like an addition to reserve the ATR through the federal government. So First Nations can buy land for economic development use. So that's what they've done. And just a quick fact, we sold them that land for $5 because we are on Treaty 5. So that was the historic behind it. And we just did that uh, in the last 12 months. So we're pretty proud of that as a city of Thompson. Um, I want to talk about the role of the table officer for a few minutes, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. You, FCM is a national organization, so that means that you are not going to be just sitting in Manitoba to do your job as vice, former or current vice president of AMM. You're going to be in Ottawa. You're going to be crisscrossing Canada, and that means that you're going to be not in the city of Thompson. As an elected official locally, you have done that for some time. Are you prepared to balance the job of a municipal councillor as a municipal deputy mayor and third vice president, understanding that that means it might take you away from the city of Thompson for some time during the next few years, because you're not just running for third vice president, because you run for third vice president, then you run for second, then you run for first, and then you're president. This is a four-year commitment that you're, you're undertaking here, Kath, uh, deputy mayor. Are you prepared to hold out and be sort of that continuous force on FCM while still maintaining being deputy mayor of your community? I'm going to tell you something. That was like one of the number one questions people asked me when I was running for vice president of AMM. How can somebody from up in Northern Manitoba do this? How are you going to travel? How are you going to like make the logistics work and stuff? And I can make the commitment. It works with my life. Um, it, and I think that I have a great council. I have a great mayor, great administration. We are in constant contact. You know, God loves Zoom. You can be anywhere and join a council meeting nowadays. So, like, so it works for me and it works in my life and it works for a commitment for four years. And this is my thing to do. So I will make it work and I can make it work. And it doesn't matter that I live far away in the north where the ice just went off the lakes or if you live in you know southern Ontario so yeah I'm fine with the commitment I would never put my name forward or ever think that maybe I could do something I'm committed to do this I love this gig and um no I'm in it what about the community? Does the do the does, does the community of the city of Thompson understand that you're doing this, and are they backing your support in running for third vice president? It's funny because I've had some people. I just kind of started getting the, some stuff on social media, and people texting me, "Hey, how do we vote for you?" And I'm like, <laughs> so well, become a municipal that, councillor, go to Calgary, and then you could vote exactly. for me. Let me see what I can do for you, but no. Uh, 
Um, yeah, they are. And I, I think that, you know, obviously there's a balance, but you still have to be present in your community. And, and uh, like, I'm fortunate to have my, my three boys that are here. And, you know, I preached on, we have to give back to our communities. I was a young widow. It's like, we got to volunteer. We got to give back. So we're a very um, present family, I think, in, in being involved. Um, and we're thankful for our community. So I, I think that your presence and still being involved, they support you. I, I, I believe that. There, I mean, there's always going to be some people that'll say, oh, she can't do it, but that's okay. You, you don't say. I would never imagine. <laughs> you know, those people on Facebook, they like to say well, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have one big question to ask you, and it's not really a question. It's your time to pitch. It's your time because we have people from across Canada who are municipally inclined, who follow municipal municipal politics, who are municipal politicians. They're going to be at the upcoming FCM convention in Calgary on June 6th, the June 9th, with the election taking place on June 9th. Why should people vote for you and take as long as you want to answer that question? Okay. Well, if they're listening and they are going to FCM, I would really hope that they would, if they have the time, to please make an effort to approach me. Because I'm big on fostering relationships and learning about where you're from and what your challenges are. So if you are listening and you are going to be there and you see me, please come up to me. I, I mean, I love people and I want to hear and I want to be engaged and I want to know you and I want to know your challenges. So that would be my first thing. Um, I'm a big relationship builder person. And, and I think that because of where I'm from and because of my unique challenges from where I live, I am very adaptable and I'm a very creative and critical thinker and a critical approach to how we can solve problems or maybe how we can not solve problems, but maybe have a creative solutions. Um, I like that about me that I, I always try to find a very different way. I always think that it's good to be a pilot project for whatever people want us to be, it gets, gets you places. I also believe that we have a real opportunity um, to have a strong voice at the table federally with a federal election on the horizon. And I believe that I have a strong voice and I have the experience and I know how to advocate. And I believe that we gotta be at the table to make an impact as the Federation of Community Municipalities with a federal election on the horizon. I really believe that's important um, because I believe in, the, in the, the core municipal issues. We have to get back to the basics. We have to get back to the basics of safety, infrastructure, funding, and homelessness, and relations with our Indigenous um, communities and individuals that live in our municipalities. So I think back to the basics, creative thinking, I'm a relationship builder, come and talk to me, I'd be your person. Um, you mentioned po partisan politics for a second, you talked about the federal yep. election, so I've got to ask this sort of follow-up question to that is, can you work across party lines? Can you work with someone who's an NDP, PC, liberal, conservative, green? Because who knows what the next uh, federal election is going to hold? And right now we have a liberal government, but it could be conservative by this time next year. Absolutely, I can. And I think that it's, you know, I don't know if it's working with, uh, like, across the lines or however you had just worded it. But I just look at it as such an opportunity. We're going to be able to maybe have a new government or maybe uh, foster and grow relationships that are already in place. I just think it's a real good opportunity when you have the, have the chance to have a seat at the table when there's an election, election on the horizon. I saw that firsthand in Manitoba. I was you know, very fortunate to be as vice president of AMM to sit through our provincial election and, and see that and be a part of the advocating and the whole campaign. Learned a lot love the experience and that's why i see actual opportunity here at a federal level also final question because we do have listeners who may want to reach out who may say okay if by any chance happening we don't get a chance to meet at fcm how can i ask a follow-up question that chris didn't ask the deputy mayor so how can people reach out to you and say i have a question about my issue let's see if you can answer it in a way that i seem fit to be able to potentially cast my ballot how can people get a hold of you Absolutely. Well, you can always text me or phone me 
0035, never changes. That's my number. Um, I do have a Facebook. You can always message me on Facebook. I'm a pretty simple person, so I'm good with phone calls. I like to talk to people. I'm not great on people always emailing and texting and stuff. So would love just to chat. So I would much rather people track me down by phone so we can have an actual conversation. Um, the links to uh, the deputy mayor's uh, Facebook page will be in the show notes and email. Um, I still find it very odd that municipal leaders are so willing to give out their phone numbers so quickly, but you heard it there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna That's say a that. good point. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure. Maybe she really likes to talk to people. Uh, before I let you go, uh, is there anything you want to add about your campaign, about your run, about the issues that municipalities are facing, or why should people vote for you before I wrap up here, Deputy Mayor? I just think that we need to uh, we need to lead with vision and determination as municipal leaders, and we have to stay focused build relationships and let's make Canada a great place to live. Um, and if we're strong municipalities, then we're a strong Canada. So I really have a passion for all of that. Um, Deputy Mayor Tom, uh, Valentino, thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at the in Calgary from June 6th to June 9th. Yes, I will be that podcast host when I see you and I see a municipal leader who's just standing there who will probably force them to chat with you. So uh, just put that out Perfect. there. If you come and chat with me, you're probably going to chat with uh, Kathy here as well. Uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you so much for sitting down and taking time and good luck on your election on June 9th. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you have to offer and your speeches that come with it thank you very much this is awesome you do this greatly appreciate it Thank you so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs. I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for tuning in over the last few weeks. Um, as we get closer and closer to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention here in Calgary, Alberta, we have noticed an uptick in listeners in uh, of the show. And we just want to say thank you so much. Uh, it's so great that we have been uh, able to bring you so many different diverse voices from across Canada on from the municipal scene. And municipalities are at a crossroad right now. And I'm looking forward to attending this year's Federation of Canadian Municipalities to bring you more diverse information, more diverse roundtables, more diverse interviews that will be able to help you and help can Canadians understand the role that our municipalities play in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, if you can, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date and stay in the loop with all those great interviews and great discussions that we have coming forward. I uh, just want to remind everyone, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today or by going into the show notes. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. <laughs>